then the concept of the genogram and the friend social gram. Genogram, we all know, the first family, so we can draw out the father, mother, brother, sister, and whatever family that is within that, that first family. And this concept of the friend's genogram, I think it's a lot, a uh, social gram is also equally important or sometimes a lot more important. So besides thinking about the first family, which tends to be pretty much constant, I think, because the parents and the siblings, they don't really change very much, they are pretty much there. The relationships that they have are also about bad if they are good terms with their mother or bad terms with the father, for example, it will be pretty much there for a certain period of time. But with their friends, it's not the same. So they may have this group of friends today, three months later, it will be a different group of friends. And then maybe um, another year later, it will be this other friend or something like that. So the friend social brand, there are changes, possibly changes, and the interactions will also change. And that affects how they behave sometimes. Because if they had you know, some fallout with their friends, misunderstandings and so on, that could create a lot of stresses for the adolescents. Um, or if they have different groups of friends, maybe one that is a bit more positive and one that, that is not so good and then they hang out more with the not so good ones so you might see them playing truant more or skipping classes and so on. So we need to get them to maybe tap on the other resource, the positive, so-called more positive one. But at the same time, when we talk about the dysfunction of that family, let's say if they have um, friends who are soon you are <laughs> not very helpful friends, I guess. You think about the first family, right? We always think about working with the dysfunctional, with the inverted commas, dysfunctional first family. It doesn't mean that they are condemned. That's it, you know, they are dysfunctional and we can't work with them and we just pray hard that they will get better or something like that. That they can transform and they can become more functional in that sense. So the same thing for this dysfunctional second family. Once we are, if we are able to reach out to them or to work with them, there might be transformations in that way as well. Um, reaching out to the friends within the second family is a very important thing. If you think about, let's say for example, working with um, this council of friends of mine also did talk about this. He had this student who was in a, who recently joined a, a gang, you know, and then he found out that this student and some students from other schools nearby in the vicinity were also part of this gang. And these are the second family. They will have a lot more impact on it. It's not going to, the school counselor is not going to be able to do very much if he is just working with this student and say, you know, it's not good to be with the gang because you pick up smoking, you might get into fights and so on. Because the second family could be there with their only people that they can turn to. Because if their first family is maybe not very strong, the first family is not quite there for whatever reason, whether it's it, it is in that sense dysfunctional or something like that, they will turn to their second family for that support. Because friends are really important. And that's where they build that kind of social network. And if you take that away from them, you tell them that no, they are bad for you, gangs are not good for you, and they have nobody else because there's no first family there and they have no friends, in the second family, then what? And they do not know how to make so-called good friends as well. So how are we going to reach out to the other, the other uh, friends in this gang from the other schools? So one of the things that we're thinking about, if we work systemically, if we are often enough to be more creative, why not work with the other school counselors in the other schools? Because he knew exactly which schools these other friends from the second family are from. So work with the big family, right? So there can be, I would imagine, maybe some kind of conversation like we saw this morning, where the school counselors from the different schools could actually work together to actually help this group and they can be functional, right? Later on, they don't have to be like relying on this particular gang to get their support. There's more, much more that they can do. And it's all of them together working to transform and to change their interactions and maybe have better relationships each other and of course tap on other resources as well within